G'day you mob, Pete here, and this is another episode of Aussie English, the number one place for anyone and everyone wanting to learn Australian English. So, today I have a GOSS episode for you where I sit down with my old man, my father, Ian Smithson, and we talk about the week's news, whether locally down under here in Australia or non-locally <laughs> overseas in other parts of the world, okay? And we sometimes also talk about whatever comes to mind, right? If we can think of something interesting to share with you guys related to us or Australia, we also talk about that in the GOSS. So, these episodes are specifically designed to try and give you content about many different topics where we're obviously speaking in English and there are multiple people having a natural and spontaneous conversation in English. So, it is particularly good to improve your listening skills. In order to complement that though, I really recommend that you join the podcast membership or the academy membership at aussieenglish.com.au where you will get access to the full transcripts of these episodes, the PDFs, the downloads, and you can also use the online PDF reader to read and listen at the same time, okay? So, if you really, really want to improve your listening skills fast, Get the transcript, listen and read at the same time, keep practicing, and that is the quickest way to level up your English. Anyway, I've been rabbiting on a bit, I've been talking a bit. Let's just get into this episode, guys. Smack the bird, and let's get into it. Yeah, how's it going, Dad? Welcome to this episode of The Goss. Hey, Pete. Hey, everyone. Yeah, good. Good. It's just been a, a busy week doing nothing, really. It's one of those weird ones. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to be one of those people, aren't I? That's it with the phones, huh? Yeah. I've got to turn mine on to aeroplane mode as well, so yeah. we don't get interrupted halfway through. Mm -hmm. Aeroplane mode. Boom. Right. Get rid of that. Man, so what's the latest goss? Let's do the COVID rundown. We're down to like six, six cases today. in Victoria. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. I'm not- I don't think any of them are in country Victoria, which is good. The ones that we even have gotten from country Victoria have been the people sneaking out of uh, Melbourne Yeah, or well, even though that- yeah, and it, uh, a prelude to my honourable mention for Idiot of the Week. We can start with that one <laughs> if you want. Yeah, well, the honourable mention for the Idiot of the Week goes to the repeat offender. Mm. Uh, the Idiot of the Week last time was the guy who had left Melbourne, went to Kilmore. Um, and infected other people there. Yep. And the same guy was in Shepparton. What? He was the one. Same truck driver. Really? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but he's only an honourable mention. He's uh, only an honourable mention. Yeah. The second honourable mention, the si the silver medal, goes to our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. What did ScoMo do this week? This week, he um, emailed out a list of talking points and strategies for his team. Yeah. Uh, but he emailed it to his entire media list. <laughs> <laughs> so, including a section in the document, apparently, that ha was uh, how to avoid difficult the difficult questions. So, it was all the talking points about how to yeah. dodge the difficult questions they were going to get. So. Well, at least we get that, you know, that a little- we get to see on the inside because- yeah. Something to talk about too would be Gladys Berejiklian's mm, well, recent. Yeah, she was the uh, she issue. was the silver medal. She was actually the bronze medalist. What do you think uh, of her? Before we get well, into the, the I recent don't issue mind, with her, I don't mind her. She uh, obviously she's a koala just, killer. Yeah, exactly. But uh, just as a, um, a sort of background, Gladys Berejiklian is the uh, premier of New South Wales, so we don't have anything to do with her politics directly. She's obviously the leader of the Liberal Party in New South Wales, and hence uh, is the. Uh, the Premier there, uh, but mostly she seems to be sort of okay for somebody that comes from that side of politics. She certainly seems to stand up to the Federal Liberal Party on things that, you know, don't seem to be you know, too kosher, uh, but it turns out she's been having an affair for four or five years with one of the other, you know, Liberal Party Was members. Was it an affair, is... though, or just a relationship? Uh, I don't well, think either- of the, were either no. of them married cheating on one another, uh, no, or it was no, more that right. they were- She has been having a secret relationship yeah. uh, uh, with, and um, there's nothing wrong with that, even if they were married. I mean, that's their private affair, but yeah. this guy's as dodgy as. <laughs> so, in terms of what- So, this is what's come out- in the last week, ICAC, which stands for ICAC, stands for. Oh, uh, now you've got me on the. But on it's the, it's yeah, some so. kind of it's the the board or the group that get together to investigate corruption in the government, yes. right? Yeah, it's a committee against you have to look corruption for something. Could be yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> should have yeah, so, prepared earlier, yeah, but that's been all over yes, the news. Yes. <laughs> Never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so that's been all over the news. So this guy's just, yeah, he's under investigation for all sorts of corruption. Um, he's and been she involved is now- in- Sorry, you go ahead. He's been involved in, um, I think it was um, housing developments, right? And yes. getting them in different areas. And yeah. so the reason that that kind of corruption is an issue is that if you are <laughs> tongue in cheek, pun intended, in bed with uh, a politician and you're mm-hmm. interested in um, obviously housing developments and the d- decisions that politicians can make can affect your housing developments. And as a result, the income or the money or the capital that you end up getting or making exactly. as a result of this, it's a big issue. And that's the sort of corruption that will happen in Australia. It won't necessarily be here's 10 grand, get my guy out of jail or something, but it'll be more make a favorable de- favorable decision that will allow me to, um, you know, e- expand my company or make, yeah, money, make money indirectly. And, and so then on. I'll support yeah. you with donations, that kind of underhanded exactly. stuff. So, it turns out that he is being investigated for having done a lot of these dodgy dealings in, a, in order to benefit himself financially, right? And he's also a politician? He is, yeah. But he also has money invested in this the, the, these sorts of developmental I believe so. I haven't read things. too much background on him. And it, it turns out from the news, at least, because she got interviewed, I think, for five and a half hours by ICAC. And the ironic thing is I watched um, the Friendly Geordies YouTube channel breakdown of this. And for anyone who doesn't know Friendly Geordies and is interested in Australian politics, check it out. He's a really funny guy. He's pretty snarky, but he is a comedian who's also a a journalist and gets deep into all the political corruption and media corruption sort of stuff in Australia. And he was diving and he he was wrecked because he'd gone in apparently- to with the fisher fishing party, what are they called? The fishing hunters and shooter party, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, shooting, hunting, and fishing. They, party. He took they took them in. They took him into um, Sydney's version of I don't know whatever it is, Canberra House or whatever it is, the political the place they all sit, the, all, all the parties. Yeah. yeah, and he was interviewing a whole bunch of them about this stuff. And then watched all of ICAC for like five hours overnight and then was doing this video and looked wrecked. And he's like, I'm still wearing the same clothes you'll see in the interview that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Where he was chatting to these people about hey, at it. least you know it's current. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But he was saying, just have a listen to this interview and how many times she just says, I can't recall. I can't, recall. I can't remember. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. And he's like, the lawyers have just told her to just shut up of about everything. Of and course then, she should. Yeah. You know, and then the- Because just as a- yeah, We don't have um, the same things like the American, the, you know, the Fifth Amendment of the American Constitution where you are entitled to say nothing- To if incriminate you are going yourself. To incriminate yourself. We don't have that. Yeah. Um, you, know, you can't plead uh, that- uh, Law because we don't have it. You in just Australia. plead stupid, right? So yeah, you just plead stupid, <laughs> which remember. is inevitable. Yeah, I can't remember, and and it's it's one of those things where if somebody says you can't remember, then yeah. it's irrefutable, and they can't. Uh, yeah, they can't, you can't pin you. You can't prove that you did remember something. Yeah, <laughs> it's so snarky. But there was one point where she, I think, the political leaders have their phone calls all recorded or something, and she's mm. chatting with the guy. And he was telling her about some money that he'd made through a deal or something like that. I, I didn't get the exact um, context of it. But then she's just like, yeah, I don't need to know about that part. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cause she- yeah. And Jordan's <laughs> just like, clearly she knows what that refers mm-hmm. to and the fact that she's being recorded. And the fact that if it gets found out, she wants plausible deniability. Yeah. yeah. But how is she still the premier? <sighs> Who knows? She's yeah. still the premier because, yeah, the- other than the governor um, of New South Wales sacking her, um, the only way she can be dismantled as such mm. is for her party to yeah. you know, dump her as leader. So, because you don't get elected to premier, be premier, no. you get elected as a member of parliament, and then the party that is in power elects a leader, and that person becomes the the premier or the prime minister in the case of the national politics in Australia. So. Yeah, I really don't like her though. At least my my well, now, limited I, understanding of the things she's been involved with, both in personal relationships with incredibly dodgy dudes, where the evidence seems to indicate that she clearly does remember more mm-hmm. than she's saying she remembers, oh, of she, yeah. and then the whole koala thing. Yeah. Like as much as that's been politicised, talk about that you. You can probably yeah, give the down no, low. No, I can't give you more than. <laughs> well, she just made uh, the sort of. Two cent nutshell review sort of thing is um, she's made a lot of decisions that have led to deforestation 
in yes. New South Wales, which have taken out large swathes of koala habitat mm-hmm. and are further fragmenting the koalas range, at which is, you know, leading to smaller and smaller fragmented populations and then ultimately the decline of of the koala as, you know, a national icon the, species. Um, and when with the, with the bushfires over summer, yep. last summer And the well, dumb decisions yeah. made there that made things even worse. Yeah, yeah. And so, Jordan got this um, uh, hashtag trending that was just um, koala killer, you know, <laughs> yes. called Gladys Berejiklian <laughs> that was going around Australia. And so, it is really imp- impressive. We can probably go on this point for a bit. How YouTubers now and these sort of political commentators can actually have significant- um, effects on oh, yeah. Yeah. Po- Australian yeah. politics because he has probably half a million subscribers to his YouTube channel, which mm. and astonishingly, every video he publishes gets hundreds of thousands of views. You know, it's an insane subscriber to view ratio right. that he's getting. Yeah. Where you know his view- his his videos get hundreds of thousands of views. I would imagine not by non-Australians who give a shit about Australian politics. Yeah. It's yeah. mostly I would imagine Australians, Australians. Yeah. and probably mostly those who are on his. The left side of Mm -hmm. the Australian political divide um, supporting Labor and the unions. And so, it is interesting as much as we whinge about America and things going going on over there with social media and its impact on um, federal politics in the US, it's interesting that it's also, you know, what responsibility does someone like Jordan from um, the Friendly Geordie show have when they get to a certain threshold where- you would imagine if he's got 400,000 subscribers, 500,000 subscribers, hundreds of thousands of those are probably voting age Australians yes. who will vote for or at least determine their political views based on his, partly his mm. commentary. What sort of responsibility does someone have when they're when they're in that sort of a position? Do yeah. they have more the, more bi- the larger they get? Well, or- I, I don't know that you have more the larger you get, um, but I think they have the same responsibility as- and I'll classify them as reporters or journalists. If they are either reporting news or commentating on news, um, then it's the same as newspapers, it's the same as radio, it's the same as television. And they all have uh, notionally um, guidelines that they're supposed to meet about balance and telling the truth and providing evidence and all those sort of things. Most of them don't. Uh, But that's that's a different story. But I don't think that they they can be treated any differently. The question of uh, does scale matter? Uh, then clearly it matters as an outcome, but I don't know that, you know, not that I'm talking politics, but I don't know that my YouTube channel with three and a half thousand subscribers and anything between a hundred and a hundred thousand hits on a video um, is is going to be any less or more responsible for what I say or do than somebody who's got half a million subscribers and a million hits on their on their videos. Um, I think we all need to have a, uh, a responsibility if we are putting messages out there to at least make it clear um, if we are editorialising, and that is making an opinion, yeah. that we're not trying to represent the facts. We're talking about what we think. Um, but I think there is a, um, a general responsibility that you know, everybody as social media commentators um, needs to have and just saying, well, you know, if you're going to lie... <laughs> then you're going to get caught out. Yeah. Um, and unless you're yeah, a politician. Unless you're a politician. Yeah. Well, then it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the old gag about lawyers and politicians. How do you know when they're lying? Their lips are moving. Their lips are moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who was the actual um, gold medalist? The idiot gold of the medalist. Week? And this is the this this one I think is is probably the clubhouse leader for idiot of the year, not just idiot of the week. <laughs> um, and this, sorry, I've got to I can't I've got to do this justice by. Um, Keep the mic in front of your face, where you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> know. Oh, Hang on. Um, Effectively, who, what's his here name? Here we go. Will Fowles, who's a Labor Party. I'm ashamed to say, given that I <laughs> sit on that side of politics, uh, member of Parliament. And the the heading in the news says, and I think they're being very polite. Uh, Victorian Labor MP Will Fowles appears to have lifted quotes from TV drama The West Wing. Yeah. He did not appear to. It was word for word a speech that came out of an episode by a speech by the president uh, in the obviously fictional TV series, mm. The West Wing. And uh, it's not just. Uh, he, he then went on, and it 
he's an idiot for making the mistake in the first place. Like, don't plagiarise. If you're going to make a, <laughs> a- And this is a speech in Parliament. This is not just, you know, in a, you know he's having a chat with his mates at the pub. Yeah. Um, it was recorded. It was, it was yeah. recorded. It's documented. It's in Hansart, which is the recording of uh, the Australian parliamentary proceedings. Um, and- it's, he's an idiot for doing that in the first place. Mm. But then the second thing he did was deny it and say, <laughs> well, I'm a fan of the West Wing. Uh, I didn't deliberately plagiarise. I must have just remembered a few quotes oh, out yeah. of it. And you can sort of say, yeah, if it was one sentence or a, yeah, a couple of phrases that mm-hmm. he used, fine. Uh, but it was word for word the entire speech. And- <laughs> And he was reading it. Like, dude, he actually had a piece you, of paper in front of him and he's reading it. You have to have rehearsed this. I know. Yeah, so or like, there, there is, must have been this thought is that not, went into this. I know. It's not this, just, oh, I, it just and, happened to. So, yeah, he's uh, he is definitely the clubhouse leader for the idiot of the year. you just got to look at and go, seriously? What happens, though, with something like that, like, apart from, obviously, the social currency that just goes down the toilet, mm. it, are there repercussions for doing that sort of thing? Or I, it's just going to be like, everyone thinks you're an idiot, but that's it. That's, that's the, where it stops. Everyone thinks you're an idiot, yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that the producers of the West Wing and the script writers are going to come after him for plagiarism. <laughs> what could you do, though? He didn't exactly. make money He's from not it. Making, it's yeah. not a commercial thing. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> But, you know, the, unfortunately, these are the clowns that we end up with in Parliament sometimes yeah. because- And I, I know nothing about uh, Will other than, you know, this popping up. Uh, but I suspect he has come up through the Labor Party and he's been a member of a branch- and he's got pre-selection based on his membership and probably good work. And for all I know, he might do good work as his local representative. But for goodness sake, you, you paid uh, a pretty good salary and you're going to get, if you yeah. even if he gets dumped from Parliament next time, he's got a uh, pension for life, um, which I think is perfectly reasonable that people who serve the country get a pension for life. Uh, but when you somebody like this, like, just do your job. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to say something, yeah. say it. Be Don't creative. Just copy somebody else's words. Well, you can't be more creative than choosing. And it is, and it is one of the great speeches in television drama. We are know? not sponsored so, by the West Wing no, at all. No, yeah. I'm a big fan of the West Wing. So. I've seen it about eight times. Mm, I think something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Me and Noah, he's here as well, smacking the microphone with his spoon. That was another episode of The Goss. Don't forget, guys, if you want to get access to all of The Goss episodes, the transcripts, the MP3s, the videos, the entire episodes from one to, I think we're up to like 40 something now. Yeah, that's it, mate. Um, Just go to aussieenglish.com.au and you can sign up for those. Anyway, I'm Pete, your host. This has been another Aussie English episode. It's a pleasure and I'll see you soon. (laughs) 